During the propagate step of the simulation, the S matrix for each cell interface and for the overall device are calculated, as well as the fields for profile monitors. Once we have the S matrices for each cell interface, we can cascade the S matrices to get a single S matrix for the full device, which will give the transmission and reflection coefficients between the modes of the first and last cell. This is returned as a result called the internal S matrix. Additionally, we can define ports on either end of the device at the first and last cell interfaces where we can select port modes. We can calculate the S matrix of the device for only the selected port modes, and this result is called the user S matrix. Because we know the S matrices for each cell interface, we can get the coefficients of forward and backward propagating modes in each cell and this allows us to reconstruct the field profile due to a specific source mode at any given position along the propagation axis. This field data is returned by profile monitors. We will cover setting up ports and monitors and how to view the simulation results in later sections of this course. The propagate step is a relatively fast calculation compared to the finding mode step, and it can be performed again and again for different cell lengths without having to repeat the finding mode step. This is one of the advantages of the EME method compared to the finite difference time domain or FDTD method where the full simulation needs to be repeated when any part of the structure geometry is modified. In addition to being more efficient for length scanning, we also get the full S matrix for all port modes from one simulation, whereas with FDTD, you need to run the simulation once for each input source and record the reflection and transmission through the ports of the device each time in order to extract the full S matrix.